I'm Tony Rosenfeld from One Mighty Mill. I'm being joined by John Alinto, my partner. He's also, he's the talent. He's the one that's going to be able to do the good talking. I'm just a simple baker. So uh, I'll get it started, and then John is going to elucidate. elucidate. Um, so what we wanted to talk a little bit about was how we message, how we talk about local grains with our customers. Um, and I think the first part, the first step, is really something that's very simple uh, and most likely self-evident to everybody here today. Um, but full disclosure, I'm somebody that, that was baking on the savory side, excuse me, I was cooking on the savory side for the last 30 some odd years and I think I'm a case study in ignorance on, uh, on local grains. So I, from a young age, I was studying varietals of heirloom tomatoes. I knew what kind of honey crisp apple would grow in what field. I knew when local berry season would start. And despite all of that great knowledge, I had never considered for a moment uh, where my flower comes from. Uh, and so in the last couple of years, when am I doing it? My voice is, in, is, is annoying to start with, but you get a little feedback. And, uh, so forgive me, you're getting a, a double head here. Um, but, uh, you know, I think this has been an education. John and I, you know, about three, four years ago, became fascinated. Um, the first fascination for my part was on bagels. Uh, and when we started talking about bagels, um, that would have been way too simple just to make a bagel. Uh, we decided that we had to mill for the bagels, and if we will the meat for the bagels, there was going to have to be local wheat. Um, and, and so that's kind of the genesis of where we started. But step one was really sharing with our customers that indeed uh, le uh, wheat is uh, sourced locally, and, and when you dig into that, you start re realizing that historically, uh, not as only is it something that was sourced locally, historically, but it was also the base of, of our food system. So I'm going to let John jump in here, and you'll see he's going to talk smoother, better, more exciting. <laughs> so I'm ready, I'm ready to get everybody fired up now. Let's go. All right, so I, I think the only thing I can add really beyond uh, everybody here knows the importance of fresh milk flour, but I think what we've learned and, and hopefully the insight I can add is that we're competing in a world uh, that has no idea what that means, right? And so um, everything that we've, we've learned has, we need to distill it down into a very shareable message that we can uh, get grocery store customers to get excited about. So just to step back so you guys understand our business a little bit. Um, we are a mill and bakery in downtown Lynn. Okay, we, opened, uh, we opened the doors to our facility about a year and a half ago. Uh, when we opened, we had a contract with the Boston Public Schools. They were doing a very innovative thing where uh, they were working with local vendors at some of the, uh, the schools that had the most need uh, for health, fresh, healthy food. And beyond that, we just opened to serve our neighborhood in Lynn. Uh, it took us about a month and we got our first uh, grocery store uh, about uh, a few days after that, we were lucky enough to land inside of the Whole Foods at Ink Block. Uh, and over the last year and a half, we've been able to, uh, we're in about 80 grocery stores. We sell three types of whole wheat bagels, we sell whole wheat tortillas, and we just launched this whole grain pretzel. Uh, but now to step back, because I think there's an interesting story. Um, so we live in our mill. If you bring somebody to our mill, and you give them a bagel, and you tell them the story, you instantly convert them. There's magic, right? And uh, and, but transporting that experience to uh, a retail environment is really hard. Uh, it's also really expensive. You have to stand in grocery stores and you have to basically one by one tell the story. And so I think the, the biggest uh, maybe story that, that I remember and that I learned is that uh, the first time we demoed at a, at a grocery store, um, we stood there and started asking people if they wanted to try bagels. It took us about 30 seconds to realize that you just cannot say that word and win uh, in, in today's bakery environment. So we quickly regrouped and we learned that we had to say, have you ever tasted fresh milk flour? And when you do that, you approach uh, the conversation in a much different uh, dimension. Uh, and after we said that, we learned that we should say, we're one mighty mill, we're making wheat you can eat, and we're trying to revitalize local food systems. And if you can get somebody to pay attention for five seconds, around that concept, 
you can win. Uh, it takes a lot, but, it, but I do think, as we think about uh, how this is going to be possible, a lot of it, or most of it, is going to be from the consumer side. And so, you know, as Jack from Stone Barnes was saying, how do, and I think this is where we can hopefully add the most, is how do you inspire customers? You know, like, we have to go from darkness of nobody knows what wheat is other than they read headlines about gluten to fresh mill flour and really inspire them. And I think with, with uh, what Jason said from Allagash, that commitment to a million pounds, having those uh, big, huge goals that's very aspirational, I think that's the way that you do it. Uh, so we've, we've tried to do it by really telling, uh, hopefully, a, a short story uh, about this idea of wheat you can eat in local food systems. And so far, it's, it's, uh, we've seen a little bit of progress. I'm going to turn it over. Well, okay, in terms of jumping to the next slide, I think obviously in terms of, obviously the, the first part of our message is that indeed, uh, even in today's uh, modern world, wheat can be sourced locally. And that's obviously, a, it's a very basic message, um, but it's instructive towards where we wanna go. Um, we're, and John will review some of the numbers, but we're milling a whole lot of, of, of local grains, uh, primarily from Maine. Uh, but for the kind of growth that we anticipate, we got to keep finding more farm and we got to plant new fields. Um, in terms of that prior slide was a little piece to what a lot of us know. Uh, hundreds of years ago, uh, the connection between uh, local farm, local miller, and local baker was, was tight and it obviously resulted in great products and great health. Um, if you fast forward to where the modern industrial flour industry is, it's obviously far different. And it's also been dislocated um, from the local food systems. So jumping ahead, um, I think, you know, the next part of the story is, is something that we're all aware of. But I think, you know, consumers uh, to varying degrees uh, there's a lot of folks, you know, the numbers that we dig into, we know that 2% of the population is celiac disease. I, uh, a very unscientific scientific poll that I, I run every day in the 30 to 50 people I talk to, seems to be that there's about 30 to 50% of people that are just really consumed, that are really confused, and they don't know if eating wheat is simply characterized as a cheat day that, that happens once a week. Um, that's certainly something that we want to work at uh, because at the start of, of these slides, cheat days I do not think were happening um, when mills were local, farms were local, and bakeries were happening fresh. Um, so I think John uh, has done a great job of, I think we try to talk about health and nutrition and what the modern industrial flour system is meant for our health. Um, part of it is obviously, you can't see it, but John's got all the antioxidant numbers and the vitamin not numbers, and we know that nutritionalism on the whole, whole uh, is not necessarily the best way to describe um, health and, 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 and consuming products for, for our, our better health. But we also know too that we're competing in, in an, a marketplace where there's a lot of data out there. And we know that the data of, of eating whole grains supports greater health. So that's something that we certainly engage in. If you look at the next uh, slide, you can see that, sure, we look at, we look at data and, and we like to share that. But more than anything, I think just the bullet points that, that reference the difference between the flour that we're sourcing, primarily stone milling, incorporating all three elements of, of a wheat berry, uh, is, is going to go a great way. Uh, you look at that, and if you're somebody that's shopping and really you know, thinking thoughtfully about what it means for your family, um, I think this might be just as compelling as knowing that you're getting 423% more magnesium. So I think in, in terms of messaging on what uh, trying to source locally local grains and also trying to mill them whole grains, um, I think a couple of fronts obviously are going to be able to do a great job. Um, in terms of the next slide, um, so look at that, introducing one mighty melt. Does that guy use get you guys really fired up, right? 
Um, so continue on to the next slide. Uh, obviously, these three stages, it's, it's going back to kind of where we were historically a couple of hundred years ago. Uh, the focus is to source wheat, uh, as much local wheat as we can. Um, one of our primary partner farms is somebody that Allagash um, before us was speaking about, but Aurora Farms up in Linnaeus, Maine, um, uh, supplied us 86% of our uh, wheat uh, for the year of 2019. We couldn't be prouder about that. We couldn't be prouder that this next year we're gonna more or less double those 200, excuse me, the 86% usage um, and I think we're hell-bent uh, not only on growing what we do uh, with Aurora, but finding new generations of farmers because obviously uh, to really make a difference, uh, it's so essential that we keep on growing uh, what next generation's farmers look like. If anybody uh, is out here considering uh, planting more fields and, and, and uh, you know, taking up a, a new profession, please talk to me because I've got uh, I've got to find more wheat for the 2020 harvest. Uh, so if anybody's on the edge, uh, we'll help you get there. Um, anyways, uh, so connecting, sourcing, the milling, and then also having that milling go directly into the baked product. John was mentioning that we have started up a new 100% whole grain. And when I say 100% whole grain, there's no funny math. Uh, it's, it's all going in there. And these pretzels, I was down in Pennsylvania working on the latest set of patch, uh, pretzels. And um, all the pretzel people in these facilities, these are facilities where they generally make uh, indestructible bleach flour pretzels. And they all turn to me, and I think the greatest compliment in my life is that they all turn to me after eating the whole grain uh, pretzel and they say, you know, they're not that bad. They're pretty damn good. Uh, so if we're doing whole grain and we're getting that response, I think, you know, we've achieved something. I think there's one or two more slides. I think we're going to, we're going to cap this off in, in one or two minutes, just really quickly in terms of what we make. We do make these pretzels and we're expanding that line. If you go to the next line, we did the whole wheat bagels, a PSA. This would be something that my grandmother, uh, both of my Jewish grandmothers would push hard on. There's still about 60 bagels back there. If you do not eat all 60 bagels, I'm going to carry great guilt uh, around. So if you're on the fence about eating another bagel, would you please do that? Because uh, it'll make me rest at ease. Um, and I think just the final slide, some tortillas as well. I think our goal where we come from, um, the sourcing is key to, to what we want to do. But more than anything, I think our, our fascination is making the kinds of baked goods that people eat in an everyday setting, whether it's for a school breakfast, whether it's something that ends up in a lunchbox. I think it's incredibly attractive to us that everyday eating uh, have, you know, uh, have be packed with whole grains and local wheat. And, and I think that's what really inspires us. So I think that's all we got. Um, so thank you so much for your time.